Hey everyone, I'm here again with David Wright. David is a personal trainer and physique competitor. Uh, he's a personal trainer at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. That's where he is now at our studio there. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right. So we're going to talk about, you know, this is, it's so easy to get trapped by not planning ahead, trying to plan how to eat healthy. And, you know, it, it, you can do it, but you have to think ahead. You got to plan ahead and it takes a little bit of effort. It's not overwhelming, but if you're too lazy and you don't think ahead and you don't plan ahead, you get yourself into trouble. You get so hungry. You just drive through the fast food place. You grab something and you eat it. So you have to plan a lot. Now I plan, I mean, I eat pretty good. You know, my, my calories are right at about, you know, 2000 every day, give or take a, a couple hundred. That's where my calories are. And that's low, but I'm also kind of an old guy, you know, so I don't need 4,000 calories. Um, but talk to us a little bit about how you help coach your clients on how to think ahead and especially those people that are really busy running all over the place on how to eat healthy uh, with a busy schedule. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, you know, personally have a really busy schedule as well. So I've got a plan ahead, but for my clients as a nutrition coach and a personal trainer, um, it's really important. And I, and I stress this so much with every client that I have, you know, eating is, you know, second to sleep is probably the second most important thing uh, in any, whether it's staying healthy, getting healthy, losing weight, gaining weight, whatever the case might be. And so one of the, the tips that I have, I'll just give you a quick example, had a client who um, is a very busy professional um, and, you know, works 10, 12 hours a day, multiple meetings, like basically back to back all day. So there's a lot going on, a lot of high stress situations. And at the same time, you know, the same client, you know, basically said, well, sometimes I don't eat at all because, you know, I forget about it or I'm in a rush when I leave. And so I don't eat breakfast. And then throughout the day, I'm so busy and, you know, I just don't get hungry anymore. Right. But then, you know, the other part of that coin is, you know, the problems that I'm having are, you know, I'm, I'm very fatigued. I don't feel good most of the time. You know, I, I just don't have energy. My strength's going down, all these different things going on, all a factor you know, at least majorly of not nearly enough nutrients. So one of the things I talked about with this person, like I do with all of my clients is you need to have something that works for you and what your situation is in her particular case. I said, look, you know, I understand you're in back-to-back -back meetings and you're doing all these things. What can you take with you? Let's start, let's start simple because I think that's the key really to kind of changing our thought process on, well, I'm so busy. I don't have time to, to eat healthy or, you know, plan ahead. What works for your schedule that you have? You know, maybe you have five, 10 minutes in between meetings. You know, if you're lucky, sometimes I guess. Um, what could you take with you to snack on to give you some nutrients to get that metabolism going, get everything running? Like, what's something you like? Do you like nuts? Do you like this? Do you like that? So I went over a couple of different things. She goes, Oh, yeah, well, you know, I like, you know, almonds. I like these different things. I'm like, okay, great. Let's start taking almonds with you to work. Keep them in your desk or, you know, wherever you can. You get to sit down at your desk before your team's meeting or your in-person meeting, whatever the case might be. Start eating something and then plan for, if possible, you know, take a lunch. Even if it's lunch at your desk, which, you know, does happen, bring, bring something with you. Because, again, you'll run out to fast food or order in or whatever. And then, you know, I, I speak for myself and a lot of the clients that I have when we eat the fast food or takeout or whatever, especially on a regular basis, you don't really realize anymore how bad that makes you feel inside and kind of lethargic because we get used to it and we think that's how we should feel. And we change everything else. We might even start going to the gym if we can maintain it because of that lethargy that we feel. But um, the problem is, is we don't realize what that's doing immediately. So like with this client, I said, look, Let's, let's start getting you a plan. Let's eat something simple for breakfast before you leave. Wake up 15 minutes early or something like that. Simple steps, simple things that you can take that are healthy, you know, because the least healthy thing you can do is not eat at all. Um, 
And so all of the symptoms, I said, you know, I'm no doctor, absolutely. See your doctor, of course, if you have you know, certain concerns. But one of the things I can tell you right off the bat is the fact that you're not eating or on the days you do eat, you might eat once and it's not very much food. That's going to cause a lot of these things to happen. It can make other things worse for you, but that specifically is going to be one of the things we fix. So talk to her. We came up with a plan of what to what to do. And, you know, that kind of started changing things. She felt better. She started being able to even think better because, you know, we get that mental fog because, you know, we're just so starved of things. So that's one of the things is really trying to make it so that it fits in your schedule, whether it's a busy schedule or not. You know, something that you can realistically, because if I eat six, six meals a day, I don't expect somebody to have, you know, my size meal sitting at their desk while they're on a Teams meeting. I would want, you know, what's going to work for your schedule, the limited amount of time you have, let's come up with something because you need to eat more food. And so people will come up with, I don't have enough time. That's why I only eat after I get off work or whatever. When in reality, we could probably sneak in the time, little, little chunks of time in there. So you can keep yourself going throughout the day instead of all the time at night or whatever this case might be for these, these folks. And so it is, it is difficult sometimes to plan or to really get into that routine, but you can do it. And, and I've seen many of my clients who have, and I've done it myself. So it's definitely something we look at and see what will fit with their schedules and kind of their situations. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I got to emphasize again, and I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Everyone is different on this. Your age matters. Your body composition matters. You take me, for example, I'm doing a series of short videos that are pretty funny where I ask people, which would you eat if you had to? You know, if you had to eat, you know, a donut or if you had to drink a soda, which would you do if you had to eat one? Well, I always say which I would pick, but what I really would do is I would do neither. So, like for me, I, but I'm in my 60s, so it's not going to hurt me to skip a meal. It's not going to hurt me to skip two meals. So if I can't do it right at my age, it's better to skip the meal. It's better to fast. But also, I'm always focusing on protein. So I might get my, because I'm really busy one day, I might get um, only one meal but I'll get 120 grams of protein in that meal. I'll make sure that it's really high um, in that one meal. And I'm taking amino acids throughout the day. So you first you have to know yourself. You have to know your schedule. And one thing that I would add to what you say is I, I would ask people, when are you going to have time to eat during the day? So now you can, okay, I'm going to have four opportunities to eat today. Once you know that and you know you want to get four meals in, you can't miss that first eating slot like I can do. I can just go, okay, I blew it. I'm just going to skip that one. Oh, I'll just skip the next one and the next one and I'll be okay. But some people aren't going to be okay. So you have to have the discipline to get that first meal. Okay, that first meal is this is when I'm going to have time to eat it. And I'm not going to have time again for four more hours. So I got to get that meal in now, or I, I get my meal in before I go to work or whatever. And then that first meal, I got to make sure I don't miss it. I have to have my food ready. Um, and then you can complete the day. So I think that's important too, is plan out when in your busy schedule, when you're going to have time to eat. Oh yeah. And, and that's, that is one of those things because you don't want to say, okay, I'm going to have these four meals. You get to work, you have no time, and then you're like, oh, I've got all this food. And then it just becomes a stress factor when in reality, you know, let's just look at, you know, we all pretty much have a schedule, you know, different people, different schedules, time frames, all those things. But try to carve out those times because generally speaking, most people's schedule, not everybody's, will stay similar. If you have an hour meeting every hour on the hour, okay, well, you know, you know that this meeting might end 10 minutes early every single time you do it. Well, plan that 10 minutes to eat something or something like that. Or you might only have that, you know, once or twice a day. Don't miss those twice a day if possible. Because if you miss, like you said, that first one, a lot of times what will happen is I miss that first slot. Maybe I had time, but I went and did something else. I'll give you a good example. Right now for me, with my six different meals that I have to eat in a day from breakfast all the way through right before bed, 
you know, I have to make sure that, you know, for instance, at 11 a.m. or right around there, regardless of the other things that I have to do here as a trainer, obviously not with a client at that time, you know, I've carved out that time, but I have to go first and eat that food because otherwise I'll get distracted like anybody would with all the other things that we've got going on here. And then, you know, come 12 o'clock, oh man, now I missed it. But now my other meals, you know, an hour and a half from now. So it's like, you know, you have to just take that first step and say, look, I'm going to make sure at least I get this first one in. And then from there, it's like, okay, I'm going to try to make sure I get my second one in, you know, make it, you know, steps like that. But if you get that first one in, then you know, okay, I'm committing to, you know, feeding myself, fueling myself from the beginning, you know, whenever that beginning is of the day for you. And, and you can go from there. But if you miss that first one, it's really easy. You know, even for people like myself who are really, really disciplined, it's really easy to miss this one. And then you're behind on that one. And for my schedule, people probably would have a really hard time uh, dealing with, you know, how many meals to eat. But if I fall behind, I'm behind on, on everything. So it throws my whole, you know, eating schedule. You know, most people's aren't that complicated and that's great that they're not. And they shouldn't be. They should be as easy as possible so that you can make it fit for your lifestyle. Yeah, and uh, last thing I'll say is that um, if you don't plan ahead, you're setting yourself up for failure. That's where you're gonna mess up. The day's gonna be gone and you ate all wrong or didn't eat at all. Um, like I said, in my case, it's easy, just skip the meal. It's better for me to just skip the meal than eat something bad, but everyone's different. So, um, David, if people want to uh, see what you're doing as far as your competitions and information about you, how do they follow you on social media? So I've got two accounts uh, on Instagram, one at David Wright underscore fitness. That's where it's got my show progress, transformation photos, kind of my fitness journey there. And then at David Wright, or excuse me, at Wright Fitness Training uh, for personal training, training tips, things like that. All right. Thanks for being with us, David. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.